Hey, 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 everybody. We are back with another Workflow Wednesday. I am your host, Fusion Phil, over here at JitCAD Cam. But to give this a few moments, I do like to give you guys a chance to get in here. I also like to know whether or not my audio is working as well. You guys can start taking bets on what I'm going to screw up when it comes to the technical side of these shows. If you're new to my channel, I first want to thank you for checking out my video, as well as all my returning viewers that are constantly here supporting me in all these ways. Feel free to leave a comment at any time if you have any specific questions about what I'm showing. As well, you can go ahead and leave a comment down below on something you particular would like to see inside of Fusion. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and kick it off. I don't see anybody telling me that my audio is terrible, so let's go ahead and dive into this. So as the thumbnail showed you guys, we're going to talk about simplifying your models for manufacturing, right? So for years now, years upon years, the common thing that I would do is I would go into different surfaces and I would highlight faces and I would use my delete key to remove those things. However, I've made two major mistakes by doing so. So in the case of this model that I've brought in, it may or may not have been designed inside of Fusion 360. So the first thing is, is I do not have a timeline down here at the bottom. Another thing that I do not have going on is under my modify tab, you're going to see here in a minute, I'm missing the simplify tool, right? So this is the very first two things that I'm going to correct. I'm going to do so by undoing what I've done using control Z, and I'm going to go ahead and capture my design history. Now that I've have my design history on, I can actually go up to the top and you'll notice that the simplify tools have now appeared in my timeline. With that simplify set of tools, the first thing I'm going to do, and now I always warn people of this, we are utilizing a modify set of tools, right? So we are modifying the body or the component that you're working on. So it's always very important, especially in manufacturing, is we do not want to mess with our original part. If you've seen my other video content, this is where I usually insert a component into my design. But I'm going to copy this body and I'm going to paste it. Control C, Control V. Now, it would be better if this was components, of course. However, as you can see, I now have my original part and the part we can modify. So we go ahead and turn off that original part. And now let's go through this process. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in. And this is probably one of my favorite things. So one of my customers reached out to me and they said, hey, I can only get this material type in a round piece of stock, right? How do I put my part center on a piece of round stock? Well, what's kind of funny here is I can go to replace with primitives and now I'm gonna pick this secondary body here. And if you really wanted to very fundamentally, what this is gonna create is a bounding primitive shape, right? So if I was working with a cylinder, I can actually say based on the Y axis, if I wanted to place this part within a cylinder, and then I can control the size of that actual material. So let's say I was going to manufacture this out of 1.5 stock. Again, 1.5, maybe my saw guy cut it to 325. So as you can see, upon hitting OK, it is now created a stock cylinder, right? And with that stock cylinder, we still have our original part. I'm just going to highlight it here you can see that that part is sitting within that primitive shape. So again, something different to think about or a little different mentality when you guys are creating your stock around your part, you have that ability to actually use that primitive shape to generate a actual nominal piece. But let's go ahead and look at this a little deeper. So again, I'm gonna still use that original body, but let's look at a few other things that we have going on, right? So. At the highest level, what I'm gonna do is remove features. Now, what I need to do is signify what body I wanna use. Again, this is your guys' warning. Do not modify your original part, right? When we do our setup, we have to still tell the software, this is my end goal. However, here is a version of it that I plan to use in certain tool paths. Now, again, I am legendary for the old delete move, but as you can see, I could still use this as if I was doing a delete tool path, right? I can highlight as many or as few faces that I want. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna take only these manually selected features. And as I hit delete, you're gonna notice it removes them completely from my part. Now, they are still there again on my original piece, as you can see, 
but this is fundamentally the easiest way to go in and now remove your features and deconstruct your part. Now, what I'm gonna do, again, we're gonna go down to my timeline. As you can see, it does signify a spot in my timeline. We'll delete that. And then I'm gonna go back up to the top. We're gonna use simplify again. Now, what you do have is the ability to auto find features once you select your body. So let's say, for example, on this part, I wanna remove all chamfers. So by clicking chamfer, as you can see, it has located every chamfer on my part. So if you're somebody that's machining something and you see all these chamfers, and especially in those 3D tool paths, it starts to recognize these chamfers as part of the model, but we wanna avoid those. So again, as I can say all chamfers, I can hit delete. And as you can see, all chamfers are now removed. But it gets better than that is if you were to also do things like holes, anywhere that it recognizes a hole, we could scale up said hole, and we could go even further to find all holes on this model. Again, able to go in, find those features and delete them and slowly deconstruct our part and our file. Again, one other thing you could do here is we could do extrude, of course, and we could scale up and scale down that extrude to find only certain features. And you'll see this again here on a lathe part. But this allows for very quick feature finding and removal to stitch together and heal your part automatically. So let's go ahead and pivot to a little more complex part. Now, this is where we dive into a lot more and a lot different strategies, but it's still all the same. So I'm gonna start this from the top. We're gonna go ahead and right click, capture design history because this was imported as a step model, but it's still the same, regardless of where this was designed or where this comes from, I can go through and I can do my simplify. As you're gonna see, I wanna remove features. This part has a ton of fillets on it. So what we're gonna say is I wanna remove all of the fillets on this part. And what that is gonna allow me to do once I scale it up to a certain size, I can either pick all or some, again, based on those radius. Now, again, the nice thing about this is, is you can actually deselect features as well. So if you wanted to, once you actually select your features, you can go through, and let's say, for example, in these corners, I do not actually want to remove specific fillets. So you can do manual selection for picking what to do or using manual selection to undo what you don't. So maybe, again, just for the kicks of it, we'll go ahead and leave some of these features still here. And what you're seeing is kind of a chaining effect, and that's why these are color-coded. So it's chaining all of those edges together. Again, we can pop in our delete. And for those of you out there in chat that are probably watching right now, I've already broke one of my rules, which you should never do. And of course that rule was, is I did not make a copy of my part. So again, as I'm stressing to you guys, reminding you all to go in and do anything and everything. I see one of you guys out there, you caught the file name here, right? I don't know why some of you, some of you all, I don't know if it's a certain culture of people, they always call me and they say the fillets, the fillets. Um, but as you're seeing is all of the fillets or fillets are very simply managed and removed. Now, this isn't going to work all of the time, right? There's always the 1% that it doesn't work. But as you're seeing on a lot of common, simpler designs, very straightforward, very simple to do. Again, if you are like me and you make a mistake every once in a while, we roll back our timeline, go ahead and copy and paste. We have two versions. We could roll forward our timeline. And as you can see, now, the first part is actually my modified part, again, because we did a modify or we did a simplify. And then my copy of my part is actually still a standalone part. So if you're like me and anybody knows, my original part is always the OG. And then I tend to tell it, you know, modify or maybe remove fillets for labeling later inside of my tool pass. Now, that does lead me to the point that if you guys are curious, I did a video a while back called Model. And what it is, is how to use model inside of your tool pass. It's a great reason and a great thing to look at so that you can pick up on things like this and reapply those to whatever it is you're doing in your workflow for recognizing what to machine and when to machine it, right? So again, as we're gonna jump to another part overall, trying to keep this video down, what's the time right now? 13 minutes, we're perfectly on schedule. So as you can see, this part was designed in Fusion 360. I still have my timeline and everything here. Not a big deal at the end of the day. It's still all the same nonetheless. First, we copy our body and paste it so that we're not messing with the first one. Then we're going to go up. We're going to do our simplify. And again, this has the ability to do a lot of different things 
Now, remove face at the end of the day, as you're seeing, is kind of the idea of doing things based on individual selections. So again, is if I wanted to remove only these chained faces or these chained features, you're noticing it's picking it automatic. I can hit delete and then I can keep going. I personally don't see a big need for remove face in my opinion, because if I was trying to achieve this stuff, a lot of times I find myself in remove features because again, as I could go through and pick and say, I don't want any of the actual manual or the auto select, I could still manually select the individual features as you saw in remove face. Now, somebody out there is gonna prove me wrong, but I just wanted to show you guys this, that even on things like extrudes, you could actually turn on extrude in this case. Again, bulk selecting items that you're trying to process or workflow through, right? So again, we could say all of them, we could go ahead and hit okay. And then if we wanted to keep that primitive shape for turning, as you can see, it's automatically brought itself through. We could again go through and actually select and deselect again, we wanted to add additional features to that as well. So nothing's wrong, nothing right here. As you guys are seeing, it's very simple to do. And I'm gonna leave you guys with that because again, the Simplify feature personally has changed how I've worked with Fusion, where I no longer have to hold the control key and have a mile long list of deletes down here in my timeline. I can actually bulk those or group those together with the Simplify tools. So before I let you guys go, you always know, I'm gonna go ahead and throw up the fact that you guys like, subscribe, follow, share our content to anybody and everybody. We appreciate it. I'm closing in on hopefully 2000 subscribers by the end of the year. That would be amazing in our first year of doing this. But outside of that, feel free to also subscribe and get notifications to our other YouTube content coming up. We are doing free support Friday. Again, I might be stuffed to the brim with turkey and take a nap mid session but you're always welcome to come put that stuff in, ask any questions you may or may not have along the way. And with that, I am gonna leave you guys to it. As always, it's not what you know, it's who you know. You know Phil over here at JitCAD Cam. So feel free to reach out with any problems you might have inside of Fusion or any questions you might have about future content. And as always, guys, I'm gonna leave you to it. Have a great rest of your day.